Art has been defined in many ways. An expression of subjective experiences and emotions, a representation of something beautiful or meaningful, a form of communication using metaphors, and the list can go on. For James Tugan, one of the world's foremost pastel artists, art has been his life's passion and an outlet through some of the most difficult chapters of his life. It all started during his early years. I grew up in Toronto, part of a evangelical Christian home all my life. Uh, became a Christian when I was very young, seven years old. What affected me most was the fact that this veneer of everything being normal was actually I had a secret in our, in our family, with the fam was a, an unhappy kind of family. Mm. And my art became uh, a way of me working that through. When you're drawing and painting or sculpting, or if you're a musical composer, any art form, you are living in a, a safer parallel world where your, your imagination can encapsulate everything that you're feeling and thinking. It, it's a safety valve where you are not silenced. And then you get to become more articulate in a given style of music or a given t style of writing or drawing or painting. You become articulate about expressing that. So for me, it became drawing. When you infuse faith, into your art, what does that look like? Well, you do things as an artist unconsciously and consciously. Unconsciously, I looked at things really closely. So I, I became a realist. Mm -hmm. Now, realism is a style of work where you examine things very closely. Mm -hmm. When I got to university and I found myself asking a question, what difference would it make to be drawing like this as a Christian. Mm. And for me, the discussion began with, well, how do you define what is real? I was really interested in what metaphor can do. Mm. Metaphors are symbolic devices. Uh, it's, it occurs in every art form, it even occurs in music, but in visual art, we use objects and surfaces, different kinds of symbols to represent things that you can't see. Mm through things that you can. And the results of James' metaphors in his artwork are stunning. Beautiful and yet subtle images that allude to several layers of meaning. It's the way a parable works in the New Testament. Um, Jesus says, I'm a door. Well, what's he talking about? He's not talking about a physical door. It, it's, they have to have a cultural Anchorage so that people will know what it's referring to. It's a very subtle yeah. kind of device, but the Bible is full to the brim with devices like that. After spending 25 years as a successful, sought after illustrator for various publications in the US and Canada, James made the transition back to the fine art world, hoping to integrate the worlds of theology, aesthetics, and psychology in visual language. The people that I care the most about, if I can put it this way, are people from my own faith community. Mm. I find now we've got a whole new ball game from not just me, but a lot of my friends struggling to be understood within our own faith community. Mm -hmm. Deep, even being taken seriously as me, doing meaningful work. I think there's this assumption in the modern world amongst the church that artists are not interested in the truth and in the authority of God. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of artists who are believers who love the Lord very deeply and who know their scriptures and are, would give their lives for it. I personally would love to see us working in partnership with pastors and priests to teach, to um, facilitate more people being able to express themselves. And also seeing Jesus as creative, as creator. Mm. Like that's an, that's an aspect of what you want the church to explore and understand. Exactly. 
We believe, myself and my colleagues, that the original artist um, was Jesus. Mm. That he's the most ingenious, creative mind that the universe has ever known. That all the language that we work with, with color and line and form and sound, was all invented by him. If you're an artist, it, to know that the person that you are following loves what you do because he did it first. There's also a personal element to this as well. The trauma that you have gone through and your family have gone mm -hmm. through as well, losing your son, Alex. Yep. Tell me a little bit about Alex. Who was he? Well, my son, Alex, was adopted along with my daughter, Rachel. Um, Alex grew up a as a brilliantly gifted athlete. Mm. Very curious, a lot of fun to be with. The problem is that when he was in grade seven, he started smoking pot. And before we could catch up with what was going on, because he wasn't telling us, mm. he was doing not just weed, but cocaine, oh. heroin, ecstasy, all kinds of things. And in Alex's case, that got combined with multiple concussions, not from soccer, but from snowboarding without a helmet. So in the end, we wound up with the perfect storm. Alex stopped being Alex. He became someone else. What is it like seeing your son change before your eyes? You feel helpless. You do everything you can think of to do. You refuse to give up, especially because he's adopted. And then, you know, the last number of years before it all fell apart, our house was a war zone of, of dealing with someone who'd become a car artist and a liar. I had to have him removed from our home because he was doing so much damage to all of us. That was really hard. Take me back to the day where Alex's life ended. He tried to get into our house. He threatened us. He threatened, he threatened us with, uh, over the phone. Mm. I had to lock the doors, turn off the lights. And, find the police and hopefully they would intercept him. He set it up, pointed a fake gun at them, and that was the end. Wow. They, they did exactly what they're trained to do. And which, that's a whole other issue, but I can't really hold anybody responsible for that except Alex, because he provoked it. For me, the issue then became, how do I deal with this phenomenon afterwards in my own work? Yeah. Yeah. So I started writing, and I started doing a series of drawings that were about uh, the fragility of connections between people. Relationships are fragile. They, trust can be broken without a great deal of difficulty. There's such a thing as an emotional wilderness where you really don't, in spite of everything rationally you think you believe, Emotionally, you're in turmoil, you're lost. It's just a reality of grieving, it's a reality of people who go through abuse, it's a reality of people who go through car crashes. The discovery of poetry became another art form for James to express his range of experience and emotions. It is impossible to describe a bond unfulfilled and yet unrelinquishable. Words will not span the loss of such dreams within reach in the 18-yard box. A breathtaking talent, a penetrating mind, a genius of anticipation, touch and the steel-eyed will to win, all wasted, all torn in obedience to a plant. For me, doing a drawing this big is two months. That much every day. It's a long process. So a lot of the imaginative creative work is at the beginning of that process and designing it and after that there's quite a bit of just detailed dedication. Mm -hmm. Poetry is f a more immediate mm. uh, and more for me more incisive. I get there a little more quickly so it was kind of a nice counterpoint artistically for me. I like it because it creates it draws a, a, a reader or a viewer in just like a drawing to, to imagine something else mm. and allude to things yeah. without everything being obvious. The fact that you had lost your son, Alex, and to have this way of, of really going through the pain through this beautiful way of art is just, is really a gift that God has given you, which comes from a lot of pain and trauma. The answer is not to not talk about it. Yeah. In the drawings, 
um, in, the, in the nine faces of Christ, if you stand back from them, you'll notice that the bottom falls out underneath. Mm. You have to do a double take to see it, but it's, it's about, when, when you go through a traumatic experience, literally, all the, the emotional, uh, logical supports under you collapse. Mm. You experience disorientation and confusion. Your, your world turns upside down. Someone needs to articulate what that feels like and to say, this is, a, this is a real feeling. This is not an unspiritual feeling. We have to talk about this somehow. And that's one of the things that art can do. You know, we're adding new and powerful stories every day. And if you haven't already, hit subscribe and stay up to date with our latest content.